بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اے اسٹریم میکنیزم ان اسپیچ پروڈکشن از دا ٹاپک آف آور ٹوڈیز لیکچر ان فونیٹکس ان فونیٹکس دا اے اسٹریم میکنیزم از دا میتھڈ بائی وچ ایئر فلو از کریٹڈ ان دا ووکل ٹریکٹ There are three main components of speech production including phonotation, articulation and airstream mechanism. So along with uh, phonotation and articulation, airstream mechanism is one of the three main components of speech production. The airstream mechanism is mandatory for sound production and it constitutes the first part of this process, the process of sound production and is called, uh, the first part of the sound production is called initiation. So airstream mechanism constitutes the this first part that is known as initiation and the organ that generates the air stream is called the initiator And there are three initiators that uh, are used in spoken human languages. Number one, uh, the diaphragm together with the ribs and lungs, that's also known as pulmonic mechanisms. And number two, the glottis or glottalic mechanisms and the tongue, lingual or valeric mechanisms any of these three initiators we just said about uh, the diaphragm glottis or tongue they may act by either increasing or decreasing the pressure generating the air stream So these changes in pressure um, by increasing or decreasing, uh, they often correspond to outward and inward air flow. Outward air flow and inward air flow. And are therefore termed as aggressive and ingressive respectively. So if the air pressure correspond to outward that is termed as aggressive and if it's termed uh, it corresponds to inward airflow that's termed as ingressive so it's easy to remember I, I guess that uh, from inward it's ingressive and if it's not inward that is aggressive I mean outward So, out of these six resulting airstream mechanisms, uh, resulting from the three initiators, so uh, uh, for each uh, two uh, airstreams, airstream mechanisms, so inward, uh, aggressive, and ingressive, so there are uh, six in total. So, four mechanisms are found lexically around the world. Number one, we have pulmonic aggressive so pulmonic aggressive is the first one pulmonic aggressive uh, is a mechanism where the air is pushed out of the lungs by the ribs and diaphragm all human languages employ such sounds like uh, like vowels and nearly three people out of four 
use them exclusively number two glottalic egressive so glottalic egressive is the mechanism where the air column is compressed as the glottis moves upward such consonants are called ejectives and ejectives and ejective like um, consonants occur in 16 percent of the languages in the world number three is glottalic ingressive before it was glot uh, glot glottalic uh, egressive and now this is ingressive ingressive um, from inhaling uh, from inhaling you can say uh, glottalic ingressive where the air column is rarefied as the glottis moves downward such, uh, such consonants are called implosives and implosives and implosive like uh, consonants occur in 13 percent of the world languages despite the name the air stream may not actually flow inward while the glottis moves downward pulmonic air passes outward through it but the reduction in pressure makes an audible difference to the sound four is lingual ingressive or a aka valoric ingressive so in this mechanism uh, the lingual ingressive the air in the mouth is rarefied by a downward movement of the tongue these are the click consonants click consonants and clicks are regular sounds in ordinary words in fewer than two percent of the words languages and they are all the all uh, the, the all of those languages are in Africa so maybe these four mechanisms may be combined into airstream contours uh, such as clicks which release into ejectives the Khoisan languages have uh, pulmonic ejective and click consonants so three three of them and Chadic languages have pulmonic implosive and ejective consonants again three and in Guni languages utilize all four uh, including pulmonic click implosive and ejective in normal vocabulary and most of uh, most other languages uh, they utilize only one or two AST mechanisms so we have here uh, example of uh, languages that use uh, three AST mechanisms and some languages they use all four um, AST mechanisms and some languages they use um, uh, three but different okay uh, not the same three um, and some most other languages in the world they utilize only two or one one or two airstream mechanisms uh, of uh, of the these four that we mentioned interjections in interjections the other two mechanisms the out of uh, six we, we discussed four now we're talking about the other two uh, the remaining uh, uh, airstream mechanisms the in interjections the other two mechanisms may be employed for example 
in countries as as diverse as Sweden, Turkey, and Togo, are pulmonic ingressive, gasped or inhaled uh, vowel is used for back channeling or uh, to express agreement. And in France, a lingual aggressive, a spurt, is used to express dismissal. Uh, the only language where such sounds are known to be contrastive in normal vocabulary is Diamond. Pulmonic Initiation Initiation the first procedure of uh, sound production. Initiation uh, by means of the lungs, actually the diaphragm and ribs, is called pulmonic initiation. The vast majority of sounds used in human languages are pulmonic egressives. So this is important point uh, to remember that the vast majority of sounds used in human languages are pulmonic egressives. So they are produced by or they are initiated by lungs and actually uh, by diaphragm and ribs. So this is the, I mean, uh, it contains the majority of s uh, sounds of human language. Uh, uh, in most languages, including all the languages of Europe, uh, excluding the Caucus, uh, all phonemes are pulmonic egressives. Okay, glottalic initiation. It's possible to initiate airflow in the upper vocal tract by means of the vocal cords or glottis. Uh, this is known as glottalic initiation if the airflow uh, is produced in the upper vocal tract by means of the vocal cords or glottis that process is called as glottalic initiation All right aggressive glottalic initiation aggressive i mean for aggressive glottalic initiation, uh, one a person lowers the glottis as if to sing a low note and closes it as far as glottis top and then rises it, building up pressure in the oral cavity and upper trachea. Glottalic aggressives are called ejectives. Egressive glottalic initiation. The glottis must be fully closed to form glottalic aggressives, or the air column would flow backward over it. It is therefore impossible to pronounce voiced ejectives. Ejective allophones of voiceless stops occurring in many varieties of English at the ends of intonation units. Ingressive glottalic initiation. For ingressive glottalic initiation, the sequence of actions performed in glottalic pressure initiation is reversed. Uh, one raises the glottis as if to sing a high tone, high note, and closes it and then lowers it to create suction in the upper trachea and oral cavity. Glottalic ingressives are called implosives, although they, mean, they mean involve zero airflow rather than actual inflow. Instead of keeping the glottis tightly closed, is tensed but left slightly open to allow a thin stream of air through. 
Unlike pulmonic voice sounds, in which a stream of air passes through a usually fixed glottis, in voiced implosives, a mobile glottis passes over a nearly motionless air column to cause vibration of the vocal cords. Phonations that are more open than modal voice, such as breathy voice, uh, are not conducive to glottic, glottalic sounds. Because in these, the glottis is held relatively open, allowing air to readily flow through and preventing a significant pressure difference from building up behind the articulator. Because the oral cavity is so much smaller than the lungs, vowels and approximants cannot be pronounced with glottalic initiation. So-called glottalized vowels and other snorants use the more common pulmonic aggressive airstream mechanism. There's no clear divide between pulmonic and glottalic sounds. Some languages may have consonants which are intermediate. For example, glottalized consonants in London English, such as uh, uh, the T in, in rat, may be weakly ejective. And similarly, fully voiced stops in languages such as Thaizul and Medo are weakly implosive. This ambiguity does not occur with the next airstream mechanism that we are going to talk, uh, lingual, uh, which is clearly distinct from uh, pulmonic sounds we dis just discussed. Uh, lingual or valeric initiation. So this is the third one, the third form of initiation in human language and it's known as a lingual or valeric initiation. In this uh, mechanism, uh, a sound is produced by a closure at two places, uh, at two places of articulation. And the airstream is formed by movement of the body of the tongue. Lingual stops are more commonly known as clicks. So lingual, lingual stops they are commonly known as clicks and they are almost universally ingressives in nature. Uh, the word lingual uh, is derived from Latin lingua which means tongue. To produce a lingual ingressive air stream, first close the vocal tract at two places at the back of the tongue, as in velar or uvular stop, and simultaneously with the front of the tongue or the lips, as in coronal or bilabial stop. These, uh, uh, these uh, holds may be voiceless, voiced or nasalized. Uh, nasalized. <coughs> Then lower the body of the tongue to rarefy the air above it. Uh, the closure at the front of the tongue is opened first as the click release. Then uh, the closure at the back is released for the pulmonic or glottalic click accompaniment or reflex. This may be aspirated, affricated or even ejective. Even when not ejective, it's not uncommon for the glottis to be closed as well for a triply arculated consonant and this third closure is released last to produce a glottalized click. Click. Clicks are found in very few languages, notably the Khoisan languages of Southern Africa and some nearby tongues such as Zulu. They are more often found in extra-linguistic contexts, such as the 
sound uh, many westerns used to express regret or pity uh, that is a dental click so a sound when somebody uh, expresses regret or pity that is uh, that gives a sound like this a dental click or the clucking noise used by many equestrians to urge on their horses i mean to just to urge their horses and here also some uh, uh, farmers actually before maybe you know that or not but they also uh, utter some sounds uh, the literal click like this this sound so so these sounds are uh, known as clicks uh, we have here uh, two examples a dental click and a literal click lingual aggressive initiation is performed by reversing the sequence of lingual ingressive so there is uh, uh, of course there are uh, two opposite uh, domains aggressive initiation and ingressive uh, initiation so the uh, performance uh, procedure is also uh, opposite or reverse of, of each of them and uh, here we are talking about aggressive initiation a lingual uh, aggressive initiation so in this the front and back of the tongue or lips and back of the tongue seal of the vocal cavity and the cheeks and middle of the tongue move inward and upward to increase oral pressure the only attested use of lingual aggressive e is a bilabial nasal aggressive e click in damen damen language and trans transcribing this also requires the use of uh, the extended IPA international uh, uh, phonetic uh, uh, what's the what's this term uh, I just forgot it's, uh, anyway it's a, it's a very very common uh, phonetic alphabets yes IPA Since the air pocket used to initiate lingual consonants is so small, it's not thought to be possible to produce lingual fricatives, vowels, or other sounds which require continuous airflow. Clicks may be voiced, but they are more easily nasalized. This may be because the vocal cavity behind the rearmost closure behind which the air passing through the glottis for voicing must be contained is so small that clicks cannot be voiced for long and allowing the air steam to pass through the nose enables a longer production okay uh, nasal clicks uh, as we just said that allowing the air stream to pass through the nose uh, enables a longer production Nasal clicks involve a combination of lingual and pulmonic mechanisms. The volume is lowered so as to direct pulmonic airflow through the nasal cavity during the lingual initiation. This nasal airflow may itself be aggressive or ingressive, independently of the lingual initiation of the click. Nasal clicks may be voiced but but are very commonly unvoiced and even aspirated which is rare for purely pulmonic nasals airstream contours uh, in some treatments complex clicks are posited to have airstream contours in which the airstream changes between the front and rear release front and click and rear uh, release non click <coughs> there are two attested types number one uh, linguo pulmonic consonants where the rear release is a uvular 
obstruent uh, such as uh, Q or X and linguoglottalic consonants where the rear release is an ejective such as Q and QX this apostrophe uh, refers to a jerk stop uh, theoretically a release into an implosive uh, implosive should be possible but both clicks and dorsal impl implosives are rare uh, the letter uh, the letter uh, dorsal implosive is uh, difficult or is rare uh, because uh, they are difficult to pronounce and no language is known to combine them percussive consonants consonants may be pronounced uh, without any AST mechanism these are percussive consonants uh, where the sound is generated by one organ striking another percussive consonants are not phonemic in any language though the extensions to the IPA for disordered speech provide symbols for a bilabial percussive uh, smacking lips I mean, you, the sound produced by smacking lips together and a bi bidental uh, percussive uh, gnashing teeth I mean you just rub uh, upper teeth on your lower teeth that this sound is uh, uh, bidental percussive the only uh, percussive known to be used in non disordered speech is a sublingual percussive so this uh, symbol is uh, this is uh, a exclamation mark on the other order on the uh, odd order uh, a tongue slap that appears uh, allophonically in the release of alveolar uh, alveolar clicks in the Sandavi language of Tanzania. Thank you very much. Uh, that's it. Uh, this is uh, your assignment. You will discuss the airstream mechanism in speech production. Uh, minimum of 1500 words. Uh, and thank you very much uh, for uh, listening to this lecture. And I hope you will prepare a nice assignment on this topic. Thank you very much.